2022, let's talk about the internet and TCGs. Well, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Again, I hope that you're just finding some joy in this hobby that we all talk about with the collectible card games, trading card games. Today, we're gonna talk about online clients. And if you're here for the flesh and blood, don't just click away, don't just go away. Actually, take a listen. I'm not gonna try to sell you on online clients. I'm actually gonna take a step back and look at the pros and cons of online clients as we have seen. And I'm gonna make a couple points but I'm not trying to sell you on any idea of flesh and blood moving to online or anything like that. We're gonna talk about all the TCGs, not just flesh and blood. I wanna start with talking about Arena. Magic the Gathering Arena has had a ton of drama over the last couple of days. They recently released a uh, some sort of, um, what do they call it? Uh, economics update, basically where they have changed the way that your wild cards and all those things work. Now, I have not really played any arena. I am not an expert on arena. I don't really understand how it worked in the first place. I don't really care to fully grasp it. I think uh, from day one, I thought arena was kind of a stupid thing for Magic the Gathering. I thought they did it completely wrong. Uh, it would kind of seem like a cash grab to me. So uh, from day one, that's where I thought, and so I never really hopped into it. And it seems based on the Magic the Gathering community and the content that I've been watching, that it is only going in the more negative, that they are only being more greedy with the Magic the Gathering Arena client and only trying to take more money from the users and not give a better experience. Um, and that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, meanwhile, Flesh and Blood, obviously we have no online client whatsoever or no mention of any online client. We have Hearthstone that's out, Legends of Rutana, Skyweaver, which is an NFT game that I've actually played a little bit of. It's kind of fun. Um, and then MetaZoo we know is working on a soul Soul game. Soul is a blockchain and they are working on a Soul client and a Soul game uh, that will actually be a digital gaming client that you will then be able to, I believe the understanding is so far, trade your cards to one another as well. So that's a cool thing that we'll get into. Um, so I want to talk about what are the wins and losses of having an online client. Now, whether or not you are on the side of, hey, we should have an online client or you're on the side of, no, the only only games that we should ever be playing are with paper cards. I think it's really important that we all understand that there are pros and cons on both sides. If you don't have an online client, you are sacrificing some things. And if you do have an online client, you are also sacrificing some things and making some risks. So I think it's really important as a community, if you're going to have a decision on this that you think for yourself, you don't just trust whatever the companies say, that you really evaluate it and what you think the, is best for the long term. Uh, the longevity of the game that you are interested in. And this does apply whether you're a player, investor, or collector, this matters. Because if you're a player, this might be a way that you get to play the game more and more and get better at the game. Uh, if you're an investor, this might be a way that a game grows and it, or it might be a way that a game doesn't grow as a result of things like Magic Arena's, um, you know, economics things. So there's a lot of reasons that you need to be critical and thinking about it. And this is why I wanted to talk about that. So uh, what are the wins of having a digital digital client. Well, in my opinion, the number one win for a TCG, um, for a game company, should be the widespread nature of digital games, um, the widespread spread nature, nature of video games. If you look at the video game industry, it has grown so much quicker, so much bigger, um, and so much more wide than the trading card game industry. You know, they both kind of started, you know, and I get it, I understand. Technology has has changed radically, I get it. But my point is that the video game industry is massive. It, it produces a much broader audience to your card game if you have a video game that people can play. There is a win there. It is, you know, people play Magic the Arena who never touched physical cards, but they saw it as a video game. They fell in love with it. They play it, and now maybe they're playing the, you know, physical card game as well. So it is a widespread audience to help grow a trading card game wide. I think that's a huge win. 
Um, it's also easy, it makes the game easier to learn. Uh, I know one of the things that I struggled with whenever I learn a new TCG is finding people to play with. You know, Robbie and I do our videos. Uh, there's a couple people locally that I hang out with. They're not always super down to like meet up and spend four or five hours learning a new TCG. But if you have an online client, it's super easy to just pick up, play, learn. There's usually matchmaking attached to it. You can, you can do the tutorial. Like when I first played Skyweaver, I did the tutorial and went through it, but then I was just like, screw this. And I just hopped into matchmaking and just kind of learned by, you know, lighting a fire up and it was great. So, um, you've got this ability to learn a game without having to connect to people. And I know your LGS should be the place that you're playing, but what if your LGS doesn't carry the game you love? Like, what if you want to play one of these games that I talk about on the channel and your LGS won't carry it? Well, then what are you supposed to do? And that's why I think that these clients can be really good for learning to play the game. And then lastly, um, for the most part, minus Magic Arena, uh, these games are risk-free. You can learn, and I get Magic, they have free packs, whatever. You can learn to play the game risk-free. Uh, you just download the client. They're usually free games. It's a, it's like, um, you know, I talk about the two-player starter kits. They need to be a great intro product. Well, this is a great intro product for any game. Um... So, you know, you have a, a lot of good positive things for having an online game. I actually heard somebody talking about uh, that uh, big competitive tournaments should be on these clients because you can't cheat. I don't agree with that, but it was a good statement. Like it was a it was a knowledgeable idea that like, hey, these one of the things that an online client hosts is that you can't cheat. You can't stack your cards differently or do whatever. So, um, here's the losses. Here's the things that, um, and we'll get to my opinions at the end. Here are the losses when you have a digital client. The question is like, why the LGS? If you're going to grow the game, like, you know, Legends of Ruterra, or uh, what was the other one I said? Uh, Hearthstone, they don't interact at all with the LGSs. They aren't benefiting the local game store that's then again, you know, take the product and learn how to play and all that. Um, so the question is why the, why the LGS? Like, what is it really doing to help the LGS? And I think there are some things that we'll talk about at the end that, that can be a non-discussion and that can actually be a benefit. It can actually help the LGS, but that is the initial conversation of how does it really help the LGS? Um, a, a big negative is it's not conversive. And I understand TCGs, like the experience. This is why I don't really, one of the reasons I don't really like arena is that, you, you know, you just have the four little things that you can talk to. Oh, good game. Oh, oops. Like you have all these stupid, th it's not like conversive. You're not actually having a dialogue with the other person. You don't get to see their face and have, interaction. I think that's one of the best parts about trading card games is that the interaction with each other. Uh, and then the, the other thing I think is kind of a negative, and this is honestly kind of a negative of all TCGs, um, but on video games it gets kind of multiplied, and that is the greed elements. That's the, um, the gambling elements that are uh, kind of... Um, just it's just kind of a hard thing to get into but uh the the way that games are built is to be addictive it's gambling right when you open a pack it's just kind of gambling and when it's online you have all these lights and stuff and there's things that actually trigger your brain to open more packs that that make you keep doing it and you don't have that stuff as much with a physical pack you have other you know the tangibleness which is one of those but uh there's a lot of um just really hard elements that um, that make it a little bit predatory on these clients. And I, I wish that those didn't exist, but that's definitely a loss. So here's the conversation I want to have. I think that these games need to find a balance um, because, uh, you know, Arena would be an absolutely perfect, um, a perfect tool for Magic the Gathering to grow if it was free and if it somehow connected with the LGS. Um, and I don't need, listen, I don't know the technology behind that. I don't know any of that kind of stuff. But if you could buy a booster box from your LGS uh, and that LGS then gave you a ticket that was basically you then got packs in Arena, that would be a really amazing thing. You could go to your LGS, buy a booster box, um, they would sell more product, people would be playing Paper Magic, and then as a result, they, you know, their ticket would get scanned in an arena, and Magic would understand where the player base is coming from, 
term, and there could be things on the player base side that they could make money doing. Um, I, I think there's ways to connect this stuff to the LGS that could have been beneficial, and I honestly think that online TCGs get kind of a negative rep because of the way that Arena has been handled, and because of the way that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro have completely screwed over the, um, the LGS sense adapting arena. And I, I think that there are, are ways that it could have been much better. Um, and, and I think that there's a model that can work. And I think it's just up to these companies to figure out what model works for their specific game. You know, I know, um, like we'll talk about MetaZoo a little bit. I, I know that there's a way to do that where it actually benefits the consumer too, where the ability to trade cards um, allows you to, you know, because of the, the blockchain technology, it allows you to trade cards and then also have a royalty built in for the, um, you know, for MetaZoo. So they're able to make money it doesn't have to be as predatory in terms of the, uh, you know, the booster packs and the burning cards and the whatever. Um, it, it, dusting cards, sorry. I think that's the official way to say it. Uh, and it allows you then to trade an extra trading card game, but online. So I think there's a couple of really great ways that this can be assimilated into benefiting uh, the players, the consumers, and the local game stores. I hope that these companies look at those things. I hope that these companies don't just leave out the local game store, because we all know that the best place to play a TCG is at your local game store. Um, around your kitchen table is also great, but at your, at your local game store is where you're gonna be able to get product, build a community, meet, you know, I think of all the people that I play at my kitchen table with, they all, I met them all, at the local game store. And so that's the bad rep that kind of the online clients get. But I think that the the win of having an online client, if done correctly, is a very, very, very good and beneficial thing for your local game store as well. You know, if you had a really, really, I, first off, I think Flesh and Blood would be one of the best online TCGs ever because you don't have the whole massive board state. It's so reactive, it's interactive, um, and then it would help the game grow and then people would go into their LGS and want to play in the events that they can actually win, you know, prize pool and money and, you know, actual physical cards that you can actually trade. So like, I think there's a lot of wins in those. Again, I do not think that LSS will ever do an online client. That is not in their wheelhouse. That is not in their drive. That is not in their vision statement. I totally understand that. That being said, I don't think we should just write things off like that uh, because I do think we are missing an opportunity. These TCGs, if they are not gonna do that, they're gonna miss an opportunity to grow their game at a much wider scale to also increase revenue, not just for them as a company, but also increase revenue if they do it correctly, not like Magic the Gathering, but if they do it correctly, increase the revenue for their LGSs and all the places around as more and more people get into the game. So that's my thoughts. Again, don't, you know, don't, don't worry about it. I'm not like saying that all these games need to go online. I own an LGS. I want to see more people playing in physical paper. I think that the conversation of collecting and investing really gravitates mostly towards uh, the, the physical paper stuff. So I don't want to lose that, but I think it can actually highlight and grow that core base of people interested in your game if you did have an online client. So I hope that some of the games end up doing that. Obviously there's places to play online and that kind of stuff. It's just not really the same thing. So hope you guys have yourself a great day. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and we will see you again. Uh, remember be kind to the people around you. We'll see you again next video.